Welcome back to another episode of Bibliophiles, a show from the Ann Arbor District Library that's all about books. Each week we answer one book-related question from what's your favorite mystery to what's a neglected classic, and this week we're talking all about coffee table books that have something to do with art and artists. My name is Christopher and I'm joined today by Lucy, Amanda, and Amanda. Lucy, what did you pick for us? Um, well, this was sort of serendipitous for me because in my house, I mostly have like my big coffee table books are not about artists and art. They're mostly like um, natural wonders, that kind of stuff. So I just got this hold that came in for me called We Are Here, Visionaries of Color Transforming the Art World. And it, you really can't see it very well, but this is a really cool um book about art and artists of, of all different kinds. It's by um, Yasmin Hernandez, and she is the founder of Gallery Girls, which is an indie art website that focuses, is solely dedicated to women, um, people of color, queer, trans people. Um, so this book is all filled with black and brown visionaries of art is how she puts it. Um, she said it was needed, she needed to create it to sort of encapsulate and document the black pop culture movement that is really um, growing. So it's a really cool book because it could sit on your coffee table and you could look through some of the spreads just to see, you know, the different kinds of art. Um, but then each artist is interviewed and so it also could be used as like a textbook in a university setting. Um, it's not just like traditional artists and traditional medium. She also turns to nightlife and the ballroom culture and looks at some artists there. So there's, you know, performance art. This is a woman who does voguing and ballroom. Um, so it's just a really, interesting and very inclusive book. She, the, the book includes, um, it's multi-generational. It has non-binary, queer, trans artists. It has um, male and female artists, artists from all over the, the world really. So it's a really um, interesting book and I've had so much fun looking at it just like as a quick glance, but I think that there's so much deeper that you can go in. She kind of asks the same questions of all the artists. And I really like books that are set up like that because you get so much different information with the same question. So that's called We Are Here, Visionaries of Color Transforming the Art World by Yasmin Hernandez. Um, Lu so yes. Oh, can I just ask a quick question? Um, sure. The, are the visual arts in the book all different? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's like collage artists, there are more traditional artists, there are even people who are more like they're creating art, but they're also pulling other artists together. So founders of different galleries and things like that. So it, it's, it's really comprehensive. Um, so I've been having fun with it. Um, so Amanda Z. <laughs> I don't know. What did you pick? Oh, oh me? Yeah. Uh, well, yes. it's challenging. Our, our last names both start with S. So um, I picked um, a book called Maps or Map, Exploring the World. Um, I, I consider maps art. Um, it's something that I've been interested in uh, my whole life from um, being uh, an undergraduate student in geology through working um, in urban design and now um, in graphic design. And um, so I've, I pulled this off my shelf this morning. I hadn't looked at it in quite a while. And it contains, it, it is a, a, just a massive compendium of the ways that people have communicated through map graphics from uh, 15,000 BCE to now, um, and, and juxtaposing all of those different types of techniques um, together, which is really fascinating to see the different ways that different cultures 
um, are able to communicate, um, you know, from thousands of years ago um, with map graphics and storytelling and all of the different types of information that can be embedded um, into, um, into maps. So, and there are really fun ways to, to think about maps as well. Um, like I said, in terms of storytelling. So this is one that is, this is a very thick and heavy book um, that somebody used a lot of words and different types of um, um, graphics to talk about their experience in Manhattan. So either using words or all the places they lost their gloves to um, Manhattan Henge, which happens a couple times a year with how the sun moves through um, all of the skyscrapers. Um, this map, just the opposite of it, which is of course very difficult to see here, but um, is a map of Glasgow and all of the smells um, that they experience. So lots of different ways to um, think about how, how you would um, tell stories through maps. Um, this is one that I thought was fascinating. Um, this has on two pages juxtaposed um, star maps, one from um, about 700, the year 700 uh, in the Gobi Desert, to 1969, um, where NASA was, was making a star chart. And just thinking about all of the ways over thousands of years that humans have interpreted the world around us um, using maps, um, which is just fascinating to sort of see them right next to each other. So you can sort of, the, it, it's hard to explain the numbers and different kinds of maps that would be, that are in this book. Um, but what's also helpful, because there's really no order to it, which is kind of fun because it just jumps all over the place. Um, and uh, what's nice though at the end is that they do have a whole section that has a timeline so that you can start from the very beginning and sort of get an understanding of, of all of those maps and, and how they work together. So um, I, I've always enjoyed working um, with maps and in that kind of uh, graphic communication. So, um, and much like what Lucy said, um, this is something that you can keep out and just sort of dive into every once in a while. There's a short description uh, for each, each map. It's just basically one per page. And um, I do wish at some points that, you know, just like we're used to with Google Maps now that you could sort of uh, zoom in a little bit so that you can see all of the fine detail in some of these things. But um, there is also um, a massive resource in the back where you can go in and you can um, find out more information. So I think that's one of the nice things about a, a coffee table book um, that that sort of invites you to learn more um, after your after you sort of get your fill of this. You can you can just learn lots more. So um, I'll throw to um, other Amanda <laughs> today. Uh, well, that's an amazing book, Amanda. And I love the way that you can totally organize information and learn information mm -hmm. through a map as your visual. I think that's a great way to um, take in information. So I'm so glad you shared that one. Yes. Uh, so I picked a book that I just bought last summer. It's giant. And it is called The Itinerant Printer. Modern Adventures in Tramping. It is by Chris Fritton, and he is a poet and printer and fine artist. I think he's based out of Buffalo right now or somewhere in New York. And this is a project he put together where he called himself the itinerant printer. And between 2015 and 2017, he traveled to 200 studios, letterpress print shops across the United States. And he spent time with them. He photo most of the most of the book is photographs with information. Um, let me see if I can find a page. Um, there's a print shop. So here's one. It's just it's photographs of the shop, and then information to go along with it. And the book is divided up into um, region. There are there's a Great Lakes region, and that's where you'll find a couple of the Michigan-based print shops. Um, so over those um, few years, he traveled to 200 print shops across the country. He pulled 30,000 prints. He traveled 75,000 miles. And so for each entry, there's photographs of the shop, some of the equipment. There are not a ton of people. Um, the focus is on the prints and the type and uh, items you would find in the print shops. So we talks about some of the equipment. It's not very it doesn't go into detail. Like you don't have to know or love letterpress to enjoy it. It's really fun to see how different print shops doing similar work across the country 
um, vary up what they do and how they create their studio. But since letterpress is such an old art form, it's got this great tie to like history and how printmaking was in a specific city maybe in the 1940s versus today, which I thought was really cool. Um, the print shops in here for Michigan, he's got Salt and Cedar, which is in Detroit. There is Kennedy Prince, which is also in Detroit. And then there is Utley Brothers, which is in Troy. And I was not familiar with them. Um, I will admit that I have not read all of the entries in this book yet. I've only read, read the Michigan ones. Um, but what I like about this coffee table book and other like large format books is it's nonfiction information, but it, and it's interesting, but you can also read it in pieces. Like I can pop in, read a couple of entries and then put it on my coffee table to look beautiful and then pick it up again casually. That's what I love about coffee table books, especially ones about art is because most of the time the book in itself is a piece of art, which I think is just so amazing and alluring and wonderful. Um, so I'm really glad about this book. His project ended, he's no longer doing it. He, I think he was going to move and do some shops in Europe, but of course with the pandemic stuff that hit last year, um, he kind of shifted gears. So I don't know what his next plan, in, plan is, um, but the book covers like people, prints and places. It delves into like presenting art, um, focusing on the analog format that Letterpress is and the history of it, which I think is really awesome. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Modern's, Modern Adventures in Tramping from the itinerant printer, Chris Fritton. <laughs> um, Christopher, what did you pick? Well, as uh, we've heard today, there are so many, many art books and coffee table books. And uh, there were a lot of things that I considered, but I ultimately landed on this one. Uh, it's Art and Arcana. Um, a visual history of Dungeons and Dragons. And it's a pretty <laughs> thick tome. The reason this book is so special to me is because I remember the dawn of D&D &D and <laughs> I spent hours and hours and hours looking through the early D&D &D books. And this book is not just a collection of artwork, but it's also a history of the company in its early days and follows uh, all of the books and products that came out for many, many decades. And as I flip through the book, I remember what it was like to see some of these images for the first time. They are just burned on my brain because I was kind of a bored farm kid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, looking at these maps of other places and places you could explore, really um, helped me transcend my, my small town. So the book is just absolutely filled with artwork. And the other thing that I love so much about this book is that a lot of the art is bad <laughs> by, uh, by kind of, you know, by comparison with many other things. And it, let, it gave me permission to make my own bad artwork. And um, I think it's important to look at art that doesn't look very polished because you get to feel like, hey, I can do something like that and be proud of it. So, of course, there's lots and lots of super polished art in this thick book as well. But uh, it's some of that early art that I'm really drawn to. So that is Art and Arcana uh, by Michael uh, Whitwer and several other authors. What we have coming up next is another great topic. It's a book in translation. So uh, stick around for that one, not stick around, tune in for that one in a week and you'll be able to see what we've all picked. Take care. <laughs>